Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. My name is Dale and in this video I'm going to talk to you about how much it cost me to get my private pilot's license here in the UK. I think most people would appreciate that flying is an expensive hobby, it's an expensive career to get into. Obviously one of the initial barriers is the cost of getting your pilot's license in the first place. So in this video I'm going to talk you through the different components, how much it costs, so you can make a more informed decision about trying to become a pilot. Also talk to you a bit about how I structured my payments. I've covered this in some other videos, but I will complete it all here for you. So stay tuned and we'll get into those costs. Okay, so before we get into the actual individual costs, I will just say a couple of things based on my experience. And again, this is in some of my other videos. Uh, one of the most important things is obviously finding a good um, flight school that you can learn from that meets your kind of expectations and the instructor is someone you know you feel that you can kind of gel with and get on with a lot of stuff i read on the forums where people have struggled to progress in their flight training tends to be due to a kind of personality mismatch of some sort between the student and the instructor remember you are the customer and you're paying for a service and if it's not working well for you don't be afraid to step away and try somewhere else go have another kind of uh, flight experience with another school and see if you may have a better relationship there and perhaps even another instructor at the same school i know it's a bit difficult but remember um you know you read some of these stories where and again it can be because you're struggling to progress but some people have done like 40 hours and still haven't gone solo and unless you're really struggling and perhaps flying isn't for you there's probably some issue between the student and the instructor and then the second thing is don't pay for all of your uh, instructor fees up front. I've seen that with many schools when I was doing my research they will say hey it's going to cost you this much to get your license based on completing it in 45 hours and you pay that up front. Obviously even if it's a very established school my recommendation is you don't pay up front because you know these kind of things are volatile. If that flight school goes out of business you've got a lot of money that's now disappeared with them as well. Now, with my particular flight school you paid as you go they did have an introductory offer where you could buy like five hours up front which had a slight discount it was about 23 percent something like that which i did do because i was you know willing to lose willing i actually it's not willing is it uh, i was happy that worst case i would lose you know around 1200 pounds or something as opposed to sinking all the money in so that's my kind of uh, initial tips to kind of thinking about um you know doing the flying and then after you've done your kind of initial flight experience and you've decided that flying is for you it's not making you sick and nauseous uh, then my other recommendation is you do your medical first before you get too far down the line because you may have uh, an unknown issue that you need to get rectified or you may have something that is going to impact you in getting your class two medical to be a general aviation pilot so i covered that in my video a while ago when i had my medical um, so I just thought that's my kind of tips. So let's start off um, with the costs. So I've broken this down into different sections and I have the total right at the end. So first thing I've put down is equipment. So when you learn to become a pilot, you're going to need certain things. Some, of course, you can borrow from the school, like a headset. Most schools will have a headset, but they will encourage you to get your own after a while. Again, there's another video on that. I bought a, a second hand, I think it's about 10 years old, Bose X headset, and that's been absolutely fine. Worked all the way through my training until I recently treated myself to the Bose A20 uh, when I passed. But again, that helps reduce some of the costs. You're also going to need charts, log books, checklists, knee board, uh, probably a bag to, to put all the things in, luminous jacket, some different pens, rulers, uh, protractory stuff basically all the basic flight components that you're going to need to kind of get you through um, all your training you don't need that all in one go and so i actually waited a few i think probably about a month into my training and i waited till some of the sales came on and then purchased all of my gear that way so in terms of equipment i spent 601 pounds and 57 pence on equipment so again bags rulers um little flight calculators everything i needed basically to transport all my stuff around have headsets everything i needed to do flight training planning and everything like that so that's one thing to keep in mind uh, next thing as i mentioned before is a medical so you're going to need a class two medical 
um, to be able to be a pilot and your most schools are going to require that I think it may even be a CAA requirement that you have your class 2 medical before you can do your solo so within the first 10 hours again I recommend that you get your medical so you don't sink too much money and if you've got a health issue it's going to stop you again these costs are going to vary but for me uh, the medical cost me 191 pounds and until the age of 50 you have your medical every two years so that's a reoccurring cost so so far we spent 601 pound 57 pence on equipment and 191 pounds on the medical now as you go through your flight training here in the uk the caa require you to pass nine ground school exams so obviously in order to prepare for that um, you're going to need some ground school training so i've covered this in my other videos i did a few things and uh, something you can probably see behind me i, I bought um, the poolies books i bought those second hand to save a bit of money and i also then went on and used easy ppl ground school for the majority of all my training for all of my exams which i passed first time and then i also um did some radio course online over zoom with a chap called irv lee and again i put some of these things down in the description but in terms of ground school i spent a total of 343 pounds and 38 pence on ground school now that doesn't include the exams that's just the training and preparation to be ready to take the exams then uh, obviously there's nine exams each of those exams is 35 pounds as mentioned i pass each one first time obviously if you have to retake them then obviously you have to reoccur um another 35 pounds and also you can only fail um the exams i think it's a maximum of four times so what that means is if you kind of fail the fourth time it resets all of your ground school training back to zero even if you'd kind of passed eight and on the last one you failed it and on the fourth time it resets you back so make sure you are ready and um, before you do those ground school exams um because it's going to be costly and probably very much demotivating so for those exams 315 pounds were sent on actually taking the exams uh, themselves so so far we've got um equipment 601 pounds 57 We've got the ground school, £343.38. We've got the medical, £191. And the ground school exams of £315. Then um, also at some point during your training, um, I did it at the end actually after my skills test, you will be required to do your radio exam. And this is so you can get your throttle license so you can operate the radio uh, in the aircraft after you've passed. Again, prices may vary, but the cost for me was £125 to do that exam. Again, I passed that the first time, so I had to incur that cost once. So that's another uh, fee there. And then when you actually come to do your skills test, at the end, there's a cost, obviously, for you to hire the plane for the duration of the hours, along with the examiner fee. And my skills test cost me £673.95. And... pence. And then when you actually pass your training and you send off your uh, paperwork to the CAA to get your license, you have to pay for that as well. I do recommend that you can save a little bit of money by only applying for your license at the same time as sending off your throttle exam paperwork as well, because otherwise there's two admin fees. So again, I sent off my CAA paperwork and uh, my throttle paperwork and that cost me 240 pounds. I can't remember if it was 40 pounds or 20 pounds, but something around that was just the cost to send it back by courier, because I guess the CA like to charge you extra money for that. So that's all the cost we've got so far. Um, and then obviously we're gonna get into the big chunk, which is the lesson. So just to sum up where we are, um, we've bought our equipment, 601 pounds 57. We've done our medical, which is 191 pounds. We've done our ground school at 343 pounds and 38 pence. We've done our ground school exams at 315 pounds. We've done our radio exam at 125 pounds. We've done our skills test exam at 673 pounds and 95 pence. And then we've paid our license fee as well of 240 pounds. So finally, it, how much did all of the actual flight training cost? So this is the costs, including 
hiring the plane, paying for the instructor and any landings throughout that duration. Um, as mentioned in another video, in terms of my flight time up to this, it, I did 55 hours and five minutes and 113 landings. So that's kind of what this is all encompassed in along with obviously the instructor fee. So my um, fee, which was covered over 46 lessons, I paid £12,441 and a penny. So if we add all of those costs together, basically the total cost for me from nothing to getting my license cost me £14,930.91. One thing I will uh, mention is my training costs actually went up about halfway through. Originally the lessons were £202.25, which included one local landing. And with um, you know, things happening in the economy, fuel prices going up, that actually increased by £33.95 to £236.20, um, including one landing in terms of per hour per lesson. And I should also mention that I was learning throughout in a Cessna 172. So if you have a larger or smaller plane, that will have a variance on obviously how much it costs for the flight to hire and everything or the flight fueling costs and everything. So that's it. Um, actually, the cost is pretty close. I was estimating it cost me about £13,000 based on my research to get my license. And when you think of the fact that the lessons um, were £12,441 and a penny, that is pretty close because I didn't really factor in um, the equipment. I didn't appreciate um, all the ground score exams, everything that had to be um, done. So actually, all, all in all, things are pretty close to what I estimated. Obviously, still a big chunk of money. I didn't have um, £15,000 all in one go to, to, to get my license. The way I actually did it is, over time, I've been putting away a little bit of money um, as I could. And when I got to about £6,000 saved up, that's when I went for my introductory flight, figuring that, obviously, if I'd like it, based on you know, assuming it's going to be costing me £202.25 pence an hour, um, I could be continuing to save money as we went through and again I started in November 2021 I think it was and then I got my license or completed my testing um, well completed my skills test on the 16th of May and did my throttle exam on the 25th of May so over that uh, time period is obviously how I was slowly chunking away um, at flying and there was actually one point where I'd almost run out of money uh, and just had to wait and sold a few things to kind of get about another I think four thousand pounds back uh, into a fund over the coming weeks to enable me to get to a point where I could complete um, the training obviously become a pilot which is fantastic so uh, I hope this helps if you're thinking about getting a pilot, pilot's license and doing that this is what the costs roughly here in the UK obviously if you can save a bit of money by learning in like a Cessna 152 that will save you a little bit perhaps 30 quid an hour 20 quid an hour something like that uh, obviously if you are more proficient and you can make progress quicker obviously 45 hours is the minimum so there's a there's a 10 hour saving that potentially you can make over me or again it might take you um longer you know 60 hours 70 hours something like that but at least you can kind of take that number roughly boil it down to what an hourly rate might be over the time and then give you some idea of how much it might cost you to get your private pilot license here in the uk thanks very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please like and subscribe consider becoming a member of the spectrum geeks channel if that's another option there's a join button down below that's just 99 pence per month to support the channel thanks very much for watching please take care of yourself until the next video goodbye for now